Hey guys, this is Tonner. Today we're going to be checking out Hail Caesar. So this is a new deck that has just come out. Uh, MTG Goldfish luckily has it all up for us. They actually translate some of the cards over and stuff, which is really, really nice. Um, Scryfall uh, takes a little bit to get some of the cards because they rely on Gather and stuff to get them. So we've got the uh, MTG Goldfish one here. So I'll put the link to it down in the comments. Um, we're going to be covering this. We're covering all the decks as they're kind of coming out. Uh, I also have like the budget upgrade already ready for the... Um, for the deck for the scrappy survivor one uh so if you guys like i want to know when you guys want me to release that kind of stuff at the moment the votes are as soon as possible as the deck list is out um but some people say you know wait for release wait for a week before etc kind of you know just to kind of i guess get more information and stuff about it but I've kind of gone through it already and got it ready. So let me know what you guys think. Go over to the poll and let me know. Uh, so the Hail Caesar deck, I've kind of gone through and I've highlighted cards because previously I went through and covered them all. But I think I'd rather like just cover like the, the big name ones in here um, that I thought was more interesting. Um, and then we'll talk about what I think of the deck as well as which cards I think I'm going to cut and stuff like that for the future. So first of all, this is a human it's a very interesting deck. So it's primarily, you know, go wide, um, Mardu tokens, essentially. Um, but it's got some sub themes. So go wide tokens is the major theme. Then we've got, you know, sacking tokens is the secondary theme there. Uh, we've got some, a fair bit of squad mechanics. So like stuff like the Securitron squadron here, the squad, um, a couple different kinds kinds of squad as well, not necessarily just pay with cost. Um, we've got uh, ways to be able to board wipe as well, a fair few different kind of board wipes and stuff in here too, as well as um, like a whole bunch of you know ways to make value of your creatures dying and stuff. So Caesar is the primary kind of face commander here. Whenever you attack, you may sacrifice another creature. When you do, you can choose two of these. You can create two one one red white red and white soldiers uh, with haste that are tapped and attacking. You could draw a card and lose one life, or you could make him deal damage equal to the number of creature tokens you control to a target opponent. That last one's really nice. The first one's really nice. The second one's really nice. Honestly, they're all really nice just for the price of sacking one creature. And it's whenever you attack, Caesar doesn't even need to attack for it. As well as the fact the first one there, if you do that, then that's giving you two tokens for the price of, you know, one token, which is just really nice. Primarily, you know, I'm going to do the first one and then I'm either going to draw a card and lose a life or deal damage later on once I get a kind of, you know, a bigger board built up. So as for the actual cards, um, I'm going through my primary kind of big choices that I like or, you know, cards that kind of stood out to me. Uh, the first one here is General's Enforcer. It makes it so that all your legendary creatures have indestructible as well as you can pay to exile uh, a card from your grave uh, from a graveyard. And if it was a creature, you get to pay, uh, create a 1-1 one, one white soldier. So this is nice because there's a lot of legendary humans in here. Um, there's a lot of like, you know, there's kind of like this other sub theme of like legendary humans and very much around humans and soldiers and stuff. So being able to do that's nice. This is a reprint that was reprinted in here. Not not a very expensive reprint, but making it so that all your legendary humans have indestructibles. Nice. We've got McReady, uh, Little Lamp Light Mare. So he's going to make it so that all of your creatures with two or less uh, power gain skulk when they attack. That's insane. <laughs> um, this is going to go straight into Alicia, who smiles upon death or whatever her name is. Uh, and then it also makes it so that whenever a creature with power four or more attacks you, its controller uh, loses two life and you gain two life. So it's a way to kind of mitigate the damage. Like if something with four is attacking you, instead you're technically going to be only taking two because you take four and then you gain two, which is really nice. Um, as I said, there's some squad mechanics in here as well. Um, a lot of kind of different squad mechanics, which are nice. Colonel Autumn's another one that I really like in here, making it so that all your legendaries have exploit. And then also whenever you exploit something, you're going to put plus one, plus one counters on each creature you control. So you play your legendary, you stack one of your tokens, and then you're going to put plus one, plus one on everything. We've got Craig Boone, Novak Guard. So he's going to sit back and be a sniper. Whenever you attack with two or more creatures, you put two quest counters on him, and then he deals damage to a creature. Um, 
that someone controls, but if they want, they can instead just take the damage to their face. Because it's got lifelink too, you're going to be able to gain life from that. We've got Elder Arthur Maxon making it so all your creature tokens have training, as well as paying. You can sacrifice uh, another creature to give him indestructible. So Mr. House, um, everyone kind of was talking about Mr. House and loved Mr. House when he was first announced. Not, um, not so much now. Um, not because he doesn't look like an amazing card, but he just doesn't really suit this deck all that much. There's only one other card that is going to be uh, like rolling dice. And even then, it's very likely that you're going to be cutting that card because it's one of the bo uh, the bobbleheads. And honestly, you need a lot of bobbleheads for them to work really well, especially with that one. Um, meanwhile, Mr. House is just going to be... You're going to have to pay four to roll a dice plus whatever you paid for treasures for it it's just not great. Um, in this deck, Mr. House overall is going to be an amazing commander. He just doesn't find his home here, in my opinion. We've got Paladin Elizabeth Taggarty. So she's going to make it so that whenever her and two other creatures attack, you get to draw a card. Then you can put something on the battlefield that's equal to or less than... Oh, sorry. That's equal to or less than her power uh, in regards to mana cost. We've got Yes Man that you can pass around to people. And then when someone passes it off, they get to draw two cards and put a quest counter on it. And then when it dies, you get to create one ones based on however many quest counters it got, which is a really interesting card. Kind of reminds me of Khan the Betrayer, um, where you're passing it to people and you go like here, you can take this. Do you want to tap it and draw two cards and give it to someone else? Or do you want to kill it basically we've got white glove gorm also the fact that it is when it leaves the battlefield so if someone exiles it you still get the creature token like the white one ones we've got white glove gourmand as well which is really nice creates two one ones when it enters and then whenever <laughs> if a human died on your turn you get to create a food so token as for spells we've got the lipton lottery which is really nice uh you get to choose a creature at random and then you gain control of that creature until end of turn against haste and you just destroy all the creatures. So if someone's like, you know, almost dying to, um, dying to like, well, almost dead, then you can essentially use this as a board wipe that you get to gain a creature. And because of the fact that you're going to have a lot more creatures than other people, it's very likely that one of the creatures that you choose is yours. That is very interesting. You get to choose any number of target creatures with equal toughness and then destroy the, ta the chosen creatures. So if you've got like, you know, a whole bunch of four toughness things that are out there, you can essentially use this as a board wipe. It's a very inefficient board wipe, except for the fact that it also has split second, which means that you can use it at any time. And when it's on the stack, no one else can cast abilities or activate any abilities. All right, we've got over here in the enchantments, we've got the battle for Hoover Dam, which makes it so that when it enters, you choose either NCR or Legion. If you choose NCR, you get to bring something back from the graveyard with a finality counter on it. If you choose Legion, then you can put a two plus one plus ones on a target creature you control whenever a creature you control dies. And then finally, Vault 11, Voter's Dilemma, essentially Prisoner's Dilemma comes back, except even better, um, or, or more interesting. Um, for each opponent, you get to create a 1-1 one, one white soldier. Then each player secretly chooses up to one target creature. Then the votes are revealed. If no creatures got votes, they, they can choose up to one. So if, if people don't choose something, then everyone gets to draw a card. If someone even chooses one thing, if your opponent decides to betray you and chooses your commander, then it gets destroyed and no one gets to choose cards. So whichever creatures uh, have the most votes or are tied for the most votes will get destroyed and no one gets to draw cards. It's freaking hilarious. I love that card. And then finally for lands, we've got like the Diamond City, which is the new one. Uh, it enters the battlefield with a shield counter on it and you can tap it to move that shield counter to a target creature, but you can only do that if two or more creatures enter the battlefield under your control. Um, did they put Windbrisk Heist in this? Yes, I knew they would. Uh, so, um, I, I like this deck a lot. Uh, as for like reprints and stuff, I made a quick note down. We've got like Skull Clamp, which is a really nice reprint in here. We've got Pitiless Plunderer. So I'm looking at like, you know, the ones that are like $2 or more, essentially. We've got uh, down here, we've got Ruinous Ultimatum, which is a reprint. Fervent uh, is... 
where's fervent fervent charge over here as well uh we've got black market too which is down here um which is a rather you know a, a decent kind of reprint very good in here we've got anguish unmaking over here as well and then we've got deadly dispute so that's you know like seven reprints above two dollars which isn't too bad um, secure the waste as well, I guess, is just above $2 according to this. Uh, the ones that I really like is that all the talismans are in here. I can't believe they put all the talismans in here. This one, in regard to mana base, I think really is better than the, um, than the Scrappy Survivor one. Um, the Scrappy Survivor one's good in regards to ramping up its own mana base from, like, enchantments and stuff like that. But this one, I just prefer the mana rocks um I, I just think the mana rocks are better for it uh, again it's got the couple bobble heads i don't like the bobble heads like they're they're mana rocks that are very inefficient like you cost pay three for them uh and then you get to create the stuff based on however many bobble heads you have but this is like pay for to create potentially two white white creature tokens I don't like it. It doesn't feel good. You need more bobble heads in there if you're going to run all bobble heads. But then I just, I think then you're buying, you're like paying too much because um, you need to either buy the precons or find someone that's not going to be kind of using them. Uh, overall, the deck looks very, very interesting. Um, I like the idea behind it. The fact that it's got skull clamp in here is really nice. And I think that they've, you know, done a decent job of that to be able to allow you to be able to create um, a decent kind of deck from this without needing to do too many upgrades. We're still going to do upgrades. We're going to look at it because there's some cards in here that, like I said about Mr. House, don't fit the overall plan completely. They're very flavorful and very amazing. But overall, I just don't think that they fit the complete deck if that makes sense. But let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Have a great day and goodbye.